To all of you gathered here in West Bethlehem Chapel this morning for our Sunday morning worship service. Uh, it's a real joy to be here today <clears throat> and uh, thank God that uh, you can be here too and pray that uh, God would be honored and uh, the Lord Jesus would be exalted as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, again this morning, thank you Judy for uh, the prelude and for setting a uh, uh, tone of worship here uh, for us today. Really appreciate that. And uh, uh, this morning, uh, as you maybe heard already, and by the way, I'm James Martin. Many you, most of you know that, but I suppose I should say that. Uh, I will not be leading the singing this morning, as you can hear from my voice. Uh, but uh, I'm glad that uh, Dick Boshard is here and he'll be leading our singing. And so to begin, I'd like you to turn in your bulletin to the uh, call to worship, and I will be reading the leader part, and Dick will come and lead you in the people report as a response. So the call to worship. Are you ready? Our God, we gather to worship you, the one who creates all things. For the gift of creation, we give thanks. We gather to worship you, the one who brings salvation through Jesus Christ. For the gift of redemption, we give thanks. We gather to worship you, the one who sustains us by the Spirit. For the gift of your presence, we give thanks. We bring to you our offerings of thanks and praise for all your gifts. We, we worship, worship you, our Creator, Redeemer and, and sustainer. sustainer. Amen. Amen. Okay, Dick. Our first hymn this morning will be All Creatures of Our God and King, page number 48. Hymn, hymn number 48. And we'll do verses 1, 2, 3, and 7. of our God and King. Lift up your voice and let us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, sing ye, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Thou rushing wind and art the strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven along. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou rising morn in praise rejoice, ye lights of evening find a voice. I'll oh, sing ye Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Thou flowing water, pure and clear, 
Make music for thy Lord to hear. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou far so masterful and bright that givest all of warmth and light. Oh, sing ye, oh, sing ye. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Verse 7. Let all things their creators bless and worship God in humbleness. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit three in one. Oh, sing ye, oh, sing ye. Alleluia. O Worship the King, page 66. 66, page 66. It's wonderful to be able to sing the praises of God, and you sang very well this morning, and I enjoyed it. It's also wonderful to listen to the praises of God, which is what I was doing this morning. Uh, so thanks for uh, your singing and for your ministry to me as I listened to you this morning. Uh, the offering today, as you notice in the bullet, is scheduled for Landis Holmes Chapel Ministries, uh, which are multiple and uh, uh, want to give thanks for that in a minute as well as pray for the pastoral staff. But before I do that, I also want to introduce our speakers for this morning and then include that uh, with the prayer. Our speaker this morning is Judy Zook, and uh, pleased that she's here. I've known Judy for quite some time. And uh, she and her husband, Ron, are currently serving as the administrative pastors at Communion Mennonite Church in Lancaster. Uh, they live in the city of Lancaster. My wife Betty and I have had the privilege of being in their home. I remember a lovely Sunday dinner 
uh, time that we had a wonderful meal and time together. And you also have uh, hosts in your house. Uh, I believe there's three, I think, uh, that you're hosting right now, a small community really there. And one of them is, I believe, a foreign person who is working with MCC, uh, if I recall correctly. So you can say anything more about that you like or your family. Uh, I maybe should also mention that some of you in the congregation here have been uh, in the past a part of Laurel Street Mennonite Church. And Ron and Judy were pastors at Laurel Street for quite a few years. In fact, my sister-in-law, who I don't see today, she and her husband went to New Holland Mennonite Church, and you pastored there. So there's a significant number of people here uh, that know you very well and actually appreciated your pastoral work as well as uh, your husband, Ron. Well, I invite you all to join me in a word of prayer today. <clears throat> Lord God, we thank you this morning for the uh, joys of life and and the beauty of life, uh, particularly this time of the year. Thank you for the beauty of the morning and the beauty of your creation. Uh, this wonderful Lord's Day, we, we really uh, give you thanks. And we also give you thanks for uh, Landis Homes and for the adequacy of the homes that we uh, live in and for the uh, outstanding support we receive of needing uh, assistance with care or medical conditions or whatever our needs are. We thank you for the abundance that's here. And we thank you for the uh, blessings of chapel ministries and the uh, pastoral services staff. I uh, pray you would bless uh, each one of them on the team. And uh, God, you know how uh, much we appreciate them and the, the valuable ministry they have to the whole campus community and beyond. And so we are just grateful and pray for your blessings and guidance for them today. And Lord, for our world, uh, we pray today. We thank you that as we look around us and around our world, there are so many places where there's so much abundance and the world is at peace and people are living together in community and caring for one another. And we give you thanks for all of that we see. But Lord, we're also aware that in our world, there is so much suffering. Lord, there is the hurricanes and the drought. There's the conflicts and the wars and destruction of homes and communities and people that are left in poverty and suffering and starvation. Lord, we pray for that wherever it's happening in our world this morning. And at the same time, we give you thanks for so many people who are working hard to try to resolve conflict and have peoples live together in understanding and peace. And Lord, we believe that the resources of this earth would be enough to sustain every person if all the energies went toward distribution and peacefully supplying for the needs of one another rather than the ill will and the hatreds and the wars and destruction that are happening. And so God, in this turmoil, I pray that you would help us to care for those who need care but at the same time, you'd help us to rejoice in the good that is happening all over our world. And in our private lives, I pray that you would help us to do the same, to not gloss over needs around us, but at the same time not to be so weighed down that we can't see the beauty of your hand in supplying such abundance. Lord, I pray this morning that you would bless us as we continue to worship. I pray that you would bless Judy as she shares with us this morning, and that we'd all be lifted in praise and honor to your goodness and to your greatness and for all that you supply. In the name of Jesus, I pray and pray that he will continue to be exalted 
as Lord of Lords. Amen. Another song? Now thank we all our God, page 86, hymn number 86, 86. The uh, scripture text that has been chosen for this morning is printed in your bulletin, and I'd like to read it now before Judy comes to share with us. Psalm 145, verses 1 to 7. Hear God's word for this morning. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day will I praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Judy, please come. Good morning, everyone. It is great to be here and see some familiar faces among uh, those of you that are here in attendance, and um, it's my great joy to be here. Um, Ten years ago, I was not in the United States. I was actually in Guatemala. Ron and I were teaching English in an elementary school for two months and living on Lake Atiklan, which is just about as beautiful as it sounds. And on the way back, we stopped at the town of Antigua, which is a huge tourist town. And near that town was a smaller town that during the 
uh, on November 1 and 2, celebrated All Souls Saints Day and All Souls Day with, huge, with a huge kite display. So we decided to go and visit that village that day. Unbeknownst to us, there was another tradition in that village and that is, on the morning before the kites are flown, everyone goes to the graveyard. All Souls Day is a day when persons who are, are, who are your ancestors or your, part of your family are remembered. And so you go to the, you, Part of the tradition then is to go to the graveyard and have a picnic. You, you decorate their graves and you tell stories and you share stories about um, the persons who have gone on before. So the way we found this out is everybody was kind of going in one direction and we didn't know where they were going. And so we followed them and lo and behold, we ended up in the graveyard. And I often think this, this coming, Saturday is All Souls Day, it's November 2. And I often think, thought, I thought again this morning, wouldn't it be fun to invite my family <laughs> to go to New Danville Cemetery or Mellinger Cemetery and have a picnic and tell stories about our grandparents and uncles and aunts and so forth who are buried in that cemetery. I don't know, sometime I would really like to do that. Anyway, since this coming, uh, Friday and Saturday are All Saints and All Souls Day, and it also begins the month of November when we talk about Thanksgiving. This morning we're going to remember past generations, we're going to value the passing on of our own stories, and we're going to give thanks. Psalm 145 is actually an acrostic poem using almost all of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. I don't speak Hebrew, I speak English, and I, th I think most of you do as well, and so I thought just for fun, I'm going to do the first four letters and the first four verses um, in English. Always I will praise you. Before the sun sets each day, I will give you praise, commending the amazing greatness of God, declaring the ways of God to the next generation or as translated in the NIV, one generation commends your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts and they will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. I wonder who commended the works of God to you? How did you come to hear God's stories? or the stories of God's love and presence and faithfulness and patience. As a child, I heard stories from previous generations, as I'm sure that you did as well. Some of, my, some of the stories that I heard were told by missionaries. My uncle Ivan Lemon was a missionary doctor in Somalia. My aunt Jean Garber Wong and aunt Mary Lemon Zuniga were both nurses in Honduras. And so as a child and as a teen, I heard their stories, their stories of God's faithfulness. And it's one of the reasons why when I went to college, I trained in, as a medical technologist. Also, following the example of my parents and grandparents and other uncles and aunts, uh, my parents are Jay and Lois Garber, in, uh, in case you thought, well, I, should, I wanted to say their names as well. And my grandparents were Ivan and Ethel Lemon and, and Clarence and Vera Garber. So they were all very much deeply involved in the, in the church, in their home churches. And so I also followed their example and was deeply involved in my home church and in churches as I was in college. As it turned out, as an adult, I never made it to another country to be a missionary but I followed the examples of my other uncles and aunts and my parents and my grandparents and worked very 
hard um, in small churches, smaller churches in the States. Those stories shaped me. But reflection without action doesn't lead anywhere, does it? The psalmist continues, they tell of your awesome works, but I will proclaim your great deeds. We hear about others' experience of God, and then we begin to write our own stories, just as you have each written your own stories. Ron and I had the privilege of, being help, of helping to plant and give leadership to a new congregation, Marietta Community Chapel, in 1979. In our early 20s, we were on the leadership team. Ron and I, Ron preached and I accompanied worship and taught Sunday school and did those kind of things, just as our grandparents and parents did at a young age. Ron started seminary in his early 40s. I started in my mid-40s, so I wasn't so sure that I really wanted to go to seminary. But then, with other people's encouragement, I decided to engage that opportunity. And part of what gave me courage to do that was continuing to remember the stories of my Aunt Mary and my Aunt Jean, who had the courage to go to Honduras as single women and they came back and told the stories of how God was present and gave them what they needed in their ministries. I grew deeper in my faith and knowledge and courage, and after graduating, we were lead and associate pastor at New Holland Mennonite Church, as was mentioned. God's accompanying presence and wisdom were with me in sermons and pastoral care, and as I led music in small group and taught classes. And I especially loved encouraging the, the younger persons in their 20s and 30s to become deeply involved in the congregation. And this is still continues to be one of my passion to, to, to help them to see themselves as vital, have a, having a vital role in, in the ministry of the church. But it's also to encourage those who are older to continue to share their wisdom and their skills. And I love that you're still up here leading the worship and the music, and we have tech people back there, and, the re and I know the rest of you also are deeply involved and continue to be active um, in, in your communities. All of you have gifts. All of you have stories. Stories are the ways that you have also experienced God's love and faithfulness and compassion and this is such a powerful way to have an influence on the next generation. But it can also include your peers. I invite you to tell of the ways that you have walked with God through the valleys and also on the mountaintops, how you have experienced God's presence. Share those stories of how, wow, those doors unexpectedly opened for you, and then you walk through them with courage and how God was present with you. S stories of the goodness of God. Those stories in our lives and the stories that we have heard from our parents and grandparents and other generations will die with us unless we take the privilege of passing them on. The longer those stories are told, the longer they will live. Each person here has a story to tell. Whether you, even if you were part of a seven child family, and you say, oh, my brother told that story, or my sister told that story, no. They did tell that story, but they told it from their perspective. You also have a story. Wisdom to pass on to others. No one else has lived your life. No one else has had the experiences that you have had. John O'Donohue writes, may you recognize in your life the presence, power, and light of your soul. May you have respect for your individuality and difference. 
May you realize that the shape of your soul is unique, that you have a special destiny here. May you, and that behind the facade of your life, there is something beautiful and eternal happening. May you learn to see yourself with the same delight, pride, and expectation with which God sees you at every moment. I'm going to repeat that last phrase again. May you learn to see yourself with the same delight, pride, and expectation with which God sees you in every moment. This morning, I give thanks for the gift that you all are to your families, to this Landis Home community, to your peers, to your friends, to all whose lives you touch. Give thanks to God for the ways God has been present to you in your life. And give thanks also for the stories that you have heard from your ancestors, your teachers, and your peers that have shaped your life. So to close, I'm going to share with you the entirety of Psalm 145. And I give thanks for my mother, Lois, who inspired me to memorize scripture. I learned when I was in my 40, mid, mid to upper 40s, that she was memorizing, that she memorized the book of First John and James and various Psalms and the Sermon on the Mount. And I thought, wow, she's in her 60s, 70s, almost 70s. If she can do that, I can probably, I wonder if I could do that in my 40s. And so I started to memorize and I've, um, it's been a really meaningful part of my life and who I am and in part of my ministry over the last uh, 20 years. So I invite you to listen for the words of thanksgiving for God's greatness and love in Psalm 145. And we sang a lot of them this morning. Thank you for those songs that you chose. Notice the sharing of God's greatness and love from generation to generation and notice the effect on the next generation as they proclaim God's good greatness and love. Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and forever. Every day I will praise you. I will extol your name forever and ever. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I, I'm going to meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. And I, I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. For the Lord is gracious and compassionate. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in all. The Lord is good to all. He is compassionate in all he has made. So all you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your faithful ones will extol you. They will tell of the glories of your kingdom. They will speak of your might so that all people might know the power of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful in all he does and the Lord keeps all his promises. The Lord lifts up all who are bowed down and upholds all those who fall. The Lord, the eyes of all look to you for food and you give it to them at the proper time. You satisfy the desires of every living thing and you, as we hold out our hands to you. The Lord is righteous in all of his ways. The Lord is faithful in all 
that he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. The Lord fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He does hear their cry and he saves them. The Lord protects those who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. My mouth, my mouth will sing in praise of the Lord. Let everything, everyone that has breath, praise the Lord forever and forever. Amen. I want, do want to have one closing prayer. <laughs> um, this is a prayer um, written by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Dear child of God, you are loved with a love that nothing can shake, a love that loved you long before you were created, a love that, was, that will be there long after everything has disappeared. You are precious with a preciousness that is totally quite immeasurable. And God wants you to be like God, filled with life and goodness and laughter and joy. May it be so. Amen. Praise. I will praise you, Lord. Hymn number 76. 7 6. Praise. I will praise you, Lord. Well, what an uh, inspiring morning. I'm sure that you were inspired as I was. Um, when Judy finished, I was sitting there and silent, silently to myself, I was saying amen, amen, amen. Uh, 
I found that you're sharing with us really inspiring, Judy, and what I really appreciated most is you just didn't tell us about sharing one story, but you included so much of your story. I learned parts of your story I hadn't known before, and so we really had a demonstration here this morning of how to do it. So uh, I pray God's best for each of us as we meet with family and others that we'll be ready to share uh, our story of God's leading in our life. And thank you, Dick, for leading this morning. The singing was just wonderful. Uh, I couldn't have done what Dick did this morning at all. Uh, so thanks for being here, Dick. I appreciate that very much. In a minute, uh, Judy will be uh, doing a postlude. And during the postlude, I'm going to ask uh, Judy and Dick to go to the back to uh, greet you after the service. And after the postlude, you'll be dismissed. But I want to share this sending with you. It'll be a scriptural sending today. But here are these words from the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. And now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to the power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.